Top Gun. Here is the Top Gun. That is not Tom Cruise in the saddle. That is Ron Washkow. And if you think that sounds familiar, well, he is related to Troy Washkow. I would think that's Papa. Two 1,710 cubic inch Allison aircraft engines. Now, there's 24 spark plugs per engine. It has two ignition systems. It is actually designed in the early or the late 20s, started being produced in the middle 30s, and is very tough competitor right now. He runs a side-to-side -side configuration. You're going to see him stair-step. The stair-step seems to give a little more balance to the tractor. He can put a little more weight out on the nose, and that's where Troy or Ron has had problems all year long is not being able to get enough weight out on the nose. All right, you've got two engines there. Anybody knows you bring your car in to get it tuned. Timing is a very big thing that's uh, important in everyday traffic. What about for this? The timing has got to be perfect on both, doesn't it? Well, the, a lot of times the guys will set them maybe so they're firing 90 degrees apart. Well, let's see if it works here. Not a full pull and a little flare to kick it off at the end. He had everything he needed for a picture-perfect pass except for one small item. Which was? No traction. <laughs> That'll get you every time. Look at this. He dug himself halfway to China with that. Turns the tires. Probably got a close to a 95-mile-an-hour tire speed on the tractor in the rear end. The front end of it's balanced a little bit better, but right there, front end comes up, up in the air, it touches the ground a couple of times, he's just going to flat run out of power down towards the end. Yeah, you say no traction, but he seems to be kicking up more dirt than the other competitors. It, it could be a lot of it on the cut of the tires. Each guy's cut these tires and spend days doing it to get them the way they want them, and the cut of the tire throwing the dirt out away from it. And also, no traction, he's digging a lot more dirt up and throwing it away. For Ron Washkow, a pole of 183 feet, Two and a half inches, not the full pull that Steve Jeske had, but good enough right now for second place. This is the Dirt Slinger. Got nothing to do with the political season we're in. This is strictly business for Bill Leischer. And Bill has got himself one whale of a rig. When Weldon, Illinois, three 572 cubic inch Aries engines, the same type designed engines we saw on the Blazing Bison tractor. Three of them. Two in line and one stair step. My goodness. This is the current reigning national champion for the United States Hot Rod Association. Bill and his father, Willie, make up this team, and he is double tough. We're going to see this young man run close to that 200-foot mark. He has a tire speed that is really unbelievable. We talked a little bit earlier about the lug on the tractor. Bill has them cut almost down to nothing, and that enables him to get up on top of the track. But he's better. got the green flag, and here we go! Yeah! We have just seen an expertise in driving. Oh, man. He had that butt pack all the way up at the head of the sled for the last, I'd say, the last 40 or 50 feet. Full pull, dirt slingers out the gate, and the man really had to study for it. He really had to work to get there. Look, at he couldn't get the helmet off quick enough. He's so happy. There's Bill Leishner, Weldon, Illinois. He is full pull at 200, and that will put him in a tie for the lead with the blazing bison and Steve Jasky. I don't believe we've seen the last tractor make a full pull yet. Mike, the tire speed on this, the rotation is enormous RPMs. The tires will spin actually hard enough to grow them a little bit. Right there, you see him get up on top of the track. See, it looks like it came out of a hole and jumped up on top of the track. Now, the tires aren't sinking down in it. The front end comes up. Look at Bill. He's really working on it. He's drifting to the left-hand side, but the last thing he wants to do is touch the brake. Right there, he, I believe he just barely taps it, keeps it around, and watch him run that white line all the way out the door. He knows he's on the path and look at the sled all the way at the top again for, for i would count at least 40 maybe 50, last 50 feet of the run he had the sled all the way at the top watching the flagman right on the end and as soon as he sees the green flag lets the motor settle down he knew it he knew it tonight's action is brought to you by four wheeler the nation's best four by four publication pick up a copy today back along with Mike Galloway. And Mike, let's talk about what goes on these trucks. We talk about what goes inside them. Let's go talk about what's on them, the paint jobs, the chrome. I mean, behind the fury and the thunder is some pretty fancy looking stuff here. You know, these trucks, they spend thousands and thousands of dollars preparing them to go into competition, but they won't let them go in just like the average truck. 
the paint work, five to six thousand dollars at times, and the chrome work. Well, I've known people to search all over the country for a person that could dip the rear end of a truck complete. So they're talking several thousand dollars. These people take a lot of pride in their equipment, and it shows when the vehicles go down the track. I think you see the personality of the driver then, too. I mean, you, you don't really get a chance to see him inside. He's got a helmet on, but outside the cab is where it really shows what kind of personality he has. That's very true. You know, a lot of times you're going to see the names on the truck. They, they mean certain things to certain people. A wife may have named the truck, or a husband may have named it, or a personal friend. And the names mean so much, and they put a lot of time and effort, and then they take them to the painters and spend hours preparing for this work. I suppose if you see a name on the side of a truck like, don't do that again. Uh, <laughs> I'd say a wife did that. A wife did that. This is the magical name in this sport. Art Arfons has been at this a long time. Two General Electric T-64s, and there's some rumors in the pit area that Art Arfons may be going out to the salt for a visitation next summer. That's not to meditate, that's uh, to try maybe and set a land speed record. Well, he had it at one time, or was close to it, and he'd like to have it again. Got a little age on him, but that never stopped on our fun. Well, it's not the Bonneville Salt Flats tonight. It's the dirt on the floor of the Pontiac Silverdome, and with 6,000 horsepower, Art Arfons is going to try and light it up. Been pulling 15 years, and you don't realize how true that statement is, because he will light the wick on both of these big motors. He needs a full pull to get into the pull-off. Three tractors are there now. Arfons will try to be the fourth. Two General Electric T-64 turbine engines. These are much like the big rescue helicopters that could actually swoop down and pick up an army tank and fly off with them. And the flash bulbs go off of the crowd. I love it. Can't get enough pictures of that. Akron, Ohio is home. He's in business tonight in Pontiac. Watch our front ends up. He is really on the line. He's going to have to really hide hard. He's got it. He has got it. He's in the pull-off with a flare. Ken Brew, this man went out tonight faster than any tractor we have seen up to this point. I would venture to say that he was probably running 25 miles an hour as he went out with a full pull. It was as quick, as, as you say, as anybody has gone out down that track. It was one last check from Dusty, and Art just lit the candle. Look at the smoke coming out of that, too. There you see it, acknowledging the crowd. 200-foot, full tilt, full pull. Art Arfons joins the pull-off. All right, here is who has made the big show so far, the tractor pull-off so far. Every one of these, all four, have had 200 full poles, 200 foot full poles. Steve Jasky and Blazing Bison, then the Dirt Slinger, then Milt Bergman and new and improved Rambunctious, Art Arfons and his Green Monster, and now Milt Bergman is going to try and uh, recapture the Rapture and see if he can't join himself and those three others in this Rambunctious 2. Two basically stock V12 Allison, and the first tractor that Milt started the campaign throughout America, had eight engines on it, and he set out front. They were eight, basically anything you could find type motors. They were junkyard Pontiac, Oldsmobiles, Cadillac, and he'd strap them in there. If he broke one of them, he just dropped it off, put another one in. Then went to an Allison with three Buicks on it, and now the twin Allison. Good balance. Not this time. Just a little short on power for Milt Bergman with the twin Allison. Now you got to stay with us because the pull-off is coming up next. All four of these tractors are going to be in a pull-off. It's coming up here from Pontiac, Michigan in just a moment. Well, Mike, before every pull-off, uh, I guess uh, you got to reload, and that's what they're doing now, adding a little more weight. When you have four tractors that are as tough as the ones that we have qualified for this pull-off, adding more weight becomes mandatory, and we're putting 2,000 pounds in the center of the box, and not only that, but we'll see the box go up the ramp even quicker this time than it did the time before. 